Today I'm going to show you how to make this train case. This is great for holding cosmetics, sewing supplies, anything that you can think of. So to start we'll need to cut out our fabric from the die. If you'll notice, two of the shapes on the die don't have a blade on one edge and that's the edge where we'll place the fabric on the fold. So let me show you how to cut out from interfacing first. So this is the foam interfacing and it's an eighth of an inch thick so we're just going to cut out with the layer folded in half. I like to rough cut my fabric or interfacing slightly larger than the shape on the die and so I'm going to just cut my interfacing down a little bit. And I'm going to cut out this circle shape on the die. So I'm going to place the fold of the fabric right where the blade stops and if you're more comfortable you can use a bit of washi tape or painter's tape to mark where that blade will stop. Okay, I'm going to place the die on top of a cutting pad and then place a second cutting pad right on top and then feed it through the machine. Okay, that interfacing is cut out and you'll repeat the same process for cutting out the fabric except you can cut up to eight layers of fabric on the die. So again I'm going to rough cut my fabric to slightly larger than the shape on the die and again I'm going to align that fold of the fabric right where that blade stops. You'll want to reference the package instructions for the cutting list of what you'll need to cut out from your fabric and your interfacing. And in case you misplace your packaging, you can log on to Sizzix.com and find the cutting list there. After you've cut out all of your fabric and interfacing using the die, you'll need to attach the interfacing to the fabric using the manufacturer instructions. Some fabric pieces will need the shape flex interfacing attached to the wrong side of the fabric and you'll just fuse those in place and then most of the exterior pieces will need the foam interfacing and I've machine basted the foam to the wrong side of the fabric but if you happen to have a foam interfacing that's fusible you'll fuse that instead. After attaching all the interfacing to the fabric we'll get started by making the handle for the lid of the train case. So to make the handle you'll want to press the fabric so that the long edges meet wrong sides together. You'll open that fabric out Press one of the long edges in toward that center crease and then follow that up with the remaining long edge of the fabric in toward the center of the crease and refold and that will create the handle piece. You'll top stitch the handle on both of the long edges using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now we'll be placing that medium rectangle on one of the exterior circles and that'll be the lid of the train case. So I'm just placing that completed handle on the right side of the fabric and I'm going to take my ruler and just measure that that handle is centered. Okay, that's a good center point and I'm going to just use two wonder clips to secure that handle on each end. And if you'll notice that handle has a bit of a lift and that's what we want. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and stitch down that handle on each of the short ends using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now we're going to trim the zipper so that it's exactly 13 and one quarter of an inch long. There's two areas of a zipper that I like to avoid. The front of the zipper kind of creates sort of a gap where the zipper tape separates and then the other end of the zipper has that metal zipper stop and we want to avoid both of those areas especially that metal zipper stop because that'll break a needle. And so to trim a zipper first I like to sew back and forth a few times near where that metal zipper stop is and then I'm just going to cut that end off and by sewing back and forth a few times that creates the new zipper stop so that you can't unzip the zipper off the zipper tape. Okay so now that I've got that straight edge I'm going to take my ruler and measure 13 and 1 quarter of an inch. I need to create a second zipper stop on this end to the inside of the markings that I made, but of course you want to unzip the zipper so that the zipper head goes past the markings. Now that I've created that new bar tack over here, I can go ahead and 
cut at the line that I drew. And now that zipper measures 13 and one quarter of an inch. Now you'll need the zipper that you just trimmed down and two of the small rectangles. So one rectangle cut from exterior fabric and the other cut from lining fabric. So first I'm gonna take the exterior fabric and place it right sides together with the right side of the zipper. Then I'll sew that short end using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. After sewing, I'll place that lining fabric so that it's right sides together with that exterior fabric, so that means that the zipper will be sandwiched in between. After aligning the short ends, I'll flip to the wrong side of the exterior and sew directly on top of the previous stitching. Now it's time to attach those small rectangles to the opposite end of the zipper. So first I'll take the exterior fabric and place it right sides together with the right side of the zipper. And again I'll sew that short end using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Next I'll bring that lining piece so that it meets the exterior fabric and that they're right sides together. And it might seem like the zipper is twisted in the middle, but just bring the fabrics right sides together and you'll be okay. So again, we're going to flip to the wrong side of the exterior and sew directly on top of the previous stitching. After sewing, you'll flip the fabrics so that they're wrong sides together. And finally, we'll top stitch those short ends a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. You'll also want to sew both of the long edges an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric and then that just keeps the fabric layers secure. Now you'll want to take out both of your large rectangles. So you'll have one from lining fabric and you'll have one from exterior fabric. We'll handle the exterior first. So you'll fold it so that the fabric is right sides together and the short ends meet and you'll sew that short end using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So this is what it looks like when that edge is sewn. And you'll repeat the same process for your lining fabric, except when you go to sew, you'll use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance instead. Next, we'll be making some quarter markings on the zipper and all of the circle pieces. So we'll start with the zipper. You'll be folding that small rectangle on the zipper so that both of the ends meet. And then just take a fabric marker or pen and then mark the end. While the zipper is still folded in half, you'll do the same thing on the opposite end. Open out that zipper and bring those two markings so that they're right on top of each other. So that marking on the zipper tape will be right on top of the marking on that small rectangle. Keep the zipper folded and mark each of the ends. Okay, now the zipper should have four markings and those will be referred to as the quarter markings. We'll do the same thing to mark the circle pieces, except instead we'll just fold the fabric so that they're right sides together and make sure the handle pieces are right on top of each other. And then we'll mark both ends. And then open out the fabric and bring those two markings right on top of each other. And then mark the opposite ends. Okay, so this is what it'll look like from the wrong side of the fabric. And you'll do the same thing for both of the exterior circles and both of the lining circles. So four circle pieces will have these quarter markings on them. Now we're going to attach the zipper to the lid of the train case. So to do that, we want the exterior small rectangle to be against the, the lid of the train case and you want to match up the quarter markings. And so our first quarter marking for pinning that small rectangle is going to be on the quarter marking that doesn't have a handle piece attached to it. Okay, we'll pin the second quarter marking in place which is right across the handle. And then there's two more quarter markings to pin in place. After pinning those four quarter markings, feel free to unzip the zipper because I feel like it's easier 
pinning and sewing with that zipper unzipped. After unzipping the zipper, you can go ahead and pin the rest of the way around. After that zipper is pinned into place, we're going to take this over to the sewing machine, but beforehand you may find it easier to sew that zipper if you first leave little clips in the zipper tape and through the fabric that are about an eighth of an inch high, and that just helps ease that straight zipper through the curve of the fabric. And so you'll leave these little clips all the way around the perimeter. Okay, we'll be sewing that pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and you'll probably need to use the zipper foot on your sewing machine for this. Now that the zipper is sewn to the exterior circle with that handle on it, we're going to add one of the lining circle pieces. So again, it should already have the quarter markings on it, and we're going to pin it in place with having that extra piece of zipper out of the way. And if you're more comfortable, you can go ahead and just use a pin to pin it to the handle so you're not sewing over it. Okay, so we're going to pin so that the fabrics are right sides together and line up those quarter markings. After you've pinned the four quarter markings, go ahead and pin the rest of the way all the way around. For sewing, we're actually flipping to the wrong side of the exterior and sewing right on top of the previous stitching, except you need to leave a, an opening for turning right side out, and I suggest leaving the opening on an area that isn't by a handle, and you want to leave that opening at least three inches long. Now that the lining is sewn in place, we'll just need to clip all the way around about an eighth of an inch high, and this will just help ease the fabric through the curve. Okay, now we'll pull the fabric so that they're right side out. Okay, you'll want to give this a really good press, and you'll also want to press that opening toward the wrong side by a quarter of an inch. And you can use some wonder clips to hold those layers together. We're going to top stitch the entire outer edge of the circle an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. And for any top stitching, I like to switch out the zipper foot for the regular foot on my machine. It just helps me create more even stitching. Now we're going to add one of the exterior large rectangles. And so we've already sewn this right sides together and we need to quarter it just like we did with the zipper. So we already have the first quarter marking where the seam is. And I'm just going to keep that folded and mark the opposing end. Okay, I'm going to bring that first marking directly on top of the seam. So here's that seam and then there's the quarter marking. And keep it flat and mark both of the ends. I'm going to use those four quarter markings to pin the large rectangle to the zipper. And I'm going to turn this right side facing out. I want that small rectangle to be right on top of the seam over there. And so I'm going to pin so that the exterior fabric is against the exterior fabric of that large rectangle. Okay, next I'll take that second quarter marking on the zipper tape and pin it to the fabric and sew on with the other two markings. Okay, go ahead and put pins the rest of the way around. I'm going to take this back over to the sewing machine and with the zipper foot I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric all the way around. Now we're going to be adding the last two circles. So you should have one exterior circle left and one lining circle left. And of course they should both have the quarter markings on the wrong side of the fabric. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this tube so that the lining fabrics and the exterior fabrics on are on both separate ends. So here's my exterior and here's my lining. So I'm going to pin my lining circle in place first. And as always, make sure all of the four quarter markings line up and then pin all the way around. Now that the lining and the exterior are both pinned, we're going to sew the exterior using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and the lining using a half inch seam allowance. When you go to sew the lining, again, you need to leave an opening at least three inches large to turn everything right side out at the end. 
Okay, now I'm just going to trim the lining seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch, and that just helps reduce bulk in the bottom of the train case. Okay, and now you can pull the case right side out through that opening in the lining. Once you've attached the lining to the zipper, you'll press the fabric's wrong sides together and top stitch using an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around the perimeter. Okay, there's two methods that you can use for finishing that hole in the lining. You can either press the fabric's wrong sides together and machine stitch using an eighth of an inch seam allowance, or you can slip stitch the opening closed by hand. Okay, so after you've closed that opening in the lining, your train case is all finished, and it's ready to fill with sewing supplies, toys, art supplies, anything you'd like.